Well, today's cosplay video is going to be a little unusual. Because in fact it's a somewhat modified version of the original video that I published only on my second channel. Since due to certain reasons we'll discuss a little later, I felt like it would be wrong to publish such video on my main channel. But of course I'll also leave a link to that video in the description so you'll be able to check it out too, if you like. Anyway, let's proceed to our today's subject. I believe there's no need to introduce the hero of our today's cosplay much, so I guess we can simply say a few words about him in general, and then talk about some more specific details regarding him that are related to the cosplay further on as we discuss it. So, basically Olorin, from Kenya Olor, allows for dream vision of mind, also commonly known as Gandalf or Mithranda, Grey Wanderer Pilgrim in Sindarin, is actually one of his starry. A group of Maya spirits secretly sent by the Valorin human-like shells of old wise men to Middle-earth in the Third Age, in order to assist its peoples in case if Sauron's power should arise again. Although being a Maya, an angel-like figure, Gandalf was restricted in use of his power, as his starry, apparently learning from Sauron's story, were supposed to assist the free peoples with wisdom through counsel and encouragement, rather than directly take part in their fates dominating them. Basically, in Lord of the Rings we can see Gandalf using his full powers in battle only in situations like when facing a Balrog, one equal to him in power. As in accepted, later versions of legendarium Balrogs were in fact fallen Maya who once followed Melka. But, anyway, for now let's just say that Gandalf is no in appearance of an old, bearded wizard in a wide-brimmed hat, stooped with age and leaning on a staff. And I guess that we may also note one rather peculiar thing about such Gandalf's appearance, which, I believe, may allow us to broaden our cosplay. So, actually Gandalf's appearance seems to be at least partially inspired by the Norse god Dothin, who is often described wandering the human realm under guise of an old man with a long white beard, a wide-brimmed hat, and a spear or staff. Which of course is also reminiscent of Gandalf. Actually we shall note another possibly similar detail in their attire as we'll discuss the armor options for this cosplay. And I believe in one of his letters J.R.R. Tolkien himself writes of Gandalf as of an Odinic Wanderer character. Also, as another peculiar thing we can recall Mouth of Sauron referring to Gandalf as Old Greybeard, which is rather reminiscent of the name Horbath, literally Greybeard, in Old Norse. I apologize for the text-to-speech pronunciation. That is actually listed as one of many names used by Othin. For instance a character named Horbatha, who is likely Othin, may be found in Horbath's Leith story, literally Lay of the Greybeard, where he engages Thor in a verbal trolling contest of sorts. However, I'd like to note that actually while being somewhat similar to Othin in appearance, Gandalf is something possibly even quite opposite to Othin in motivations and actions. For, Gandalf's purpose as one of his Tari is generally to help people fight evil, while, although sometimes sharing wisdom, Othin, in his affairs with human world seems to be rather concerned with own fear of Ragnarok and getting more fallen mighty warriors for his host in Valhall, thus he's often responsible for fomenting conflicts and wars among humans that result in extensive bloodshed, and for the same reason he's also accused of granting victory to the weaker side in battles, so that the stronger ones would die in battle and join his forces in Valhall to fight beside him during the events of Ragnarok. Though, Probably this aspect of Othin's character may be compared to earlier Gandalf's concept in The Hobbit, when it still wasn't related to Silmarillion's Legendarium, as Gandalf was also sort of provoker, basically it was said about him that tales and adventures sprouted up all over the place wherever he went. And of course he was responsible, for example for Bilbo's involvement in a rather dangerous quest which resulted in a full-scale battle. But, excuse me, I'm getting carried away. Returning to the main subject, the point here is that we may actually note some peculiar similarities in appearance of Gandalf and Othin in his Wanderer disguise. Which, I believe, may allow us to turn our Gandalf cosplay into Wanderer Othin cosplay through some few minor changes. Of course, we may note it right away that Othin, unlike Gandalf, had only one eye. In Volus Popoem it is said that his missing eye is actually hidden in the Mimi's Bruna Spring, but I guess that we'll actually be able to relatively easily deal with this problem during the character appearance creation. As for more possible problems regarding Gandalf's cosplay however, I guess we may mention that pretty much one of the core elements of Gandalf's appearance is his long beard. While the longest beard we can get in character creation is only this long, though we'll discuss one silly trick to make it a little longer later in the video. However, there actually exists one option that may provide us with some rather fitting uniquely long grey beard, and it's discussed in the version of this video published on my second channel. But the problem about such option is that it may only be obtained through the use of some tools that may also be used for cheating, and it's pretty much the reason I had to make this version of this video, as I felt like it was wrong and somewhat useless to discuss an option unobtainable without the use of some rather risky tools, especially it's wrong and useless since the use of such tools may possibly result in a ban if used online. 
as I believe many would like to use the cosplay to reenact the legendary you cannot pass, or you shall not pass as in the movie, seen in PvP. Thus suggesting options that would be unusable online felt kinda wrong, but at the same time that risky option was indeed fitting and it felt like the cosplay would be incomplete if I ignore it, so being torn apart by such choices and worrying a lot about this stuff I ended up making two versions of this video. But anyway, let's finally proceed to the sliders options. Of course the settings presented here are not mandatory and maybe you'd like to have some different face for your Gandalf cosplay, but still I hope that these options may possibly be useful to you. Basically, I tried to make my character somewhat similar to Gandalf from some artworks by John Howe, while also seeking to keep it usable for Roth in cosplay too. Not sure if I succeeded though. Actually I made two different face options for this character, one normal, and another with a trick to get a longer beard which involves setting some chin and jaw sliders to extreme values. Which results in rather grotesque face if we look at it without long beard. Unfortunately, such changes cannot be done independently from other parts of the face, as changing chin and jaw also affected the face in general. So while the second, long beard, option is based on the first one, it's somewhat different as I had to alter it even further to make it look better. But anyway, I really hope that these options will be at least a little bit useful to you. So. Let's begin with the first option. As for the age and voice settings, I guess we should set them both to aged of course. Regarding the musculature, I guess that either option may be used, but since Scandalf is said to be strongly built, I guess the muscular option would be more fitting. As for the body hair, I guess we may use either option. As for the character build settings, Gandalf is said to be a strongly built man with broad shoulder, although shorter than average man and stooped with age. So I guess we can use the following body proportions. Although unfortunately Dark Souls character creation doesn't allow us to change our character's height. Now some pausing will be required here, as we're going to quickly look through the face sliders without commenting most of them much. As for the haircut, I guess that we should use some longer options. Like this longer male haircut. Although it's not really that long and appears more like something that would fit Aragorn or Boromir more. So we may also try using this female haircut that is even longer. And I guess that it actually looks rather nice when wearing a hat over it. Though, as for something more practical in combat, I guess the ponytail haircut may still be used too. As for the brows, I guess we should use some thick ones. And now let's proceed to the long beard modification of this appearance. As for the off-in version of these two options, 
I guess that they require but a single change in order to be used as Othin's cosplay. Basically we should change one pupil in order to reflect the fact that Othin is one-eyed. I guess that one way to do it is to simply pick this white blinded option. So from distance it would appear like a closed eye. But I guess we may also use this black option along with some dark red-brown color to give an impression of a missing eye. And that would be almost all the modification of these options needed to use them for Othin cosplay. The main difference between Gandalf and Othin cosplays will be in the gear that we'll discuss a little later on. Though, I guess that we may also note one extra hair option for Othin's modification of this cosplay, namely this shorter wavy standard male haircut, which didn't really fit Gandalf's cosplay much, but I believe would look rather well for Othin. While along the female haircut we suggested for Gandalf might look somewhat weird in case with Othin. Though, possibly not too weird, as we'll discuss it later in the video. But generally, I guess that would be pretty much it regarding the side as options for this cosplay. What I hope to achieve is an appearance of an old man equally swift to anger and to laugh, but also extremely tired of an enormous burden of a duty bestowed upon him. Well, I'm not sure if I succeeded even a tiny bit at it. Probably not at all. But I still hope that the options we discussed were at least somehow useful to you. But let's now finally proceed to the attire options for Gandalf's cosplay. And let's start with probably the most recognizable element of Gandalf's appearance. His wide-brimmed hat with a conical crown that I guess we may say is even somewhat associated with him. I believe that one of the most obvious options, and indeed a very nice option, for this attire piece, is Carla's pointed hat. I guess that its appearance fits our purpose almost perfectly, and indeed gives a necessary wizard impression so that people would recognize our cosplay easily. The only problem about Carla's pointed hat is its color, which is black, dark gray, while Tolkien actually describes Gandalf's hat as blue. And I believe that it's a rather peculiar detail about Gandalf's appearance, as it might be yet another Gandalf-related thing inspired by Othin's Wanderer disguise. Because Othin's appearances as a wanderer actually are somewhat associated with blue, dark blue clothes, and we shall use this when we'll be discussing attire options for Othin's cosplay later in this video. As for Gandalf's cosplay, however, I guess we may use another, somewhat similar, headgear option that would be slightly closer to Tolkien's Gandalf's hat in color. Namely the Black Witch hat. Which isn't really black, but rather purple. Of course it's not blue either, but still somewhat closer to the blue. However, I guess that the peculiar shape of this hat, that somehow also gives somewhat a feminine impression which probably isn't something we're looking for with this cosplay, makes this option way less fitting. And basically we can find lots of artworks and other media depicting Gandalf in rather grey hats anyway, so Carla's pointed hat is still not really a bad option and I guess it would be way more recognizable. But, as for more options, I guess that of course we may need the extremely wide-brimmed sage's big hat. However, it is this plague doctor-like mask which doesn't really fit Gandalf's cosplay much, and neither it fits Othin's, which makes it not really that fitting, and the brim's a little too wide anyway. And as another option, we may note the worker hat which is pointed, although not really that much wide-brimmed, and looks somewhat weird. But still I guess we may mention it as well. However, let us now proceed to the chest armor options. Well, of course it may look like a no-brainer. But the first option I'd like to discuss is the Ordinary Sorcerer Robe. Since it's indeed somewhat fitting, and not simply as a Sorcerer Robe for a wizard character. Because even although Gandalf the Grey is associated with grey color and his cloak is said to be grey, Tolkien actually specifies that Gandalf's cloak wasn't originally simply grey, but rather it was of an elven silver grey hue, and only being tarnished by where it appeared to be just grey. And I guess the light grey, ash-colored sorcerer robe may actually more or less be used as a tarnished silver grey robe, after all. In addition to that, Tolkien also notes that Gandalf had a silver scarf, while sorcerer robe also features something like small grey scarf on character's neck. Although it's probably not precisely what Tolkien meant, but still it's an interesting detail. And, actually Tolkien also notes that despite the association with grey color, Gandalf's colors were always white, silver grey, and blue. The latter possibly inspired by Othin's Wanderer appearance as we discussed it earlier. So, in the end the slightly worn sorcerer robe, with its white grey and blue colors actually seems to be something that might fit Gandalf whose colors were white silver grey and blue, although probably in details it's not precisely what Gandalf was supposed to wear, but still it may fit the description. And of course it would fit even more if you're more focused on Gandalf the white cosplay, and would like to use it without a hat and with something like the court sorcerer trousers for example. 
And speaking of the court sorcerer set, its chest piece may be actually another obvious option that we may use. Although probably not that close to the book in colors, it's somewhat shorter than ordinary sorcerer robe. While although Gandalf's cloak is called long, it's also said that it would not reach much below his knees, and thus the court sorcerer robe may be more fitting in this aspect. And I guess that this option also makes our character appear somewhat shorter, which may actually be useful, since as we discussed it earlier, although being strongly built, Gandalf was shorter than average man, especially when stooped with age. And also the darker grey parts of the court sorcerer robe fit Carla's pointed hat if we pick to use it. But let's proceed to another chest piece, that could actually be a nice option, the ordained dress. I guess that its color could actually fit our cosplay, and the cape on its back looks especially nice to me, providing this traveler impression about the character. However, if we look at the front part of this dress, I believe we can't help but to notice that it gives some feminine feeling about the character. Which appears somewhat weird for this cosplay, thus making this option less fitting, but still I couldn't just ignore it, as in other aspects it actually seems to look rather well. As for other possible attires however, I think there's one unusual option that we may use if we're looking for something darker grey. Namely the Grave Warden set items, excluding the headpiece, of course. Well, I guess that it indeed looks rather unorthodox, but at the same time I guess its color is closer to that usually associated with Gandalf the Grey. While its tattered appearance may actually somewhat fit the extremely worn, battered attire of the Grey Wanderer he used on his seemingly endless journey. Possibly something what Gandalf the Grey's attire could appear like during his days long duel against Balrog. However, let's return to the attire options. As for other unusual choices, I guess that we may try using the jail robe. Or also the robe of prayer along with something like Carla's gloves possibly. But I guess such color is really closer to black than gray, and altogether is not really that fitting. And since we've mentioned a hand armor option, let's say a few more words about this part of armor. Basically, for my Gandalf cosplay I use no hand armor at all. However I guess that we may actually use a wide range of various light, non-metal, hand armor pieces. Particularly I'd note that cleric gloves look rather well. But again, I think we may use any other option as long as it doesn't look like a metal knight's gauntlet and fits the rest of the equipment. However, as video already gets rather long and we still have much to discuss, I'd like not to list all the numerous possibilities here, but rather proceed to the next part of armor. I'm sorry, though you're probably rather wondering when will I finally shut up lol. But anyway, let's talk about the leg armor and footwear. Basically, one remarkable element noted about Gandalf's appearance were his immense black boots he wore during his travels in the wild. And, somehow ironically, the two armor options that would really fit the black boots description are, Desert Pyromancer skirt, and Slave Knight leggings. And while both indeed feature some rather distinctive and fitting black boots, the rest elements of these pieces appear slightly weird and not really fitting our cosplay. Though, I guess that it's not impossible to use them as they're mostly covered with longer robes. However, let's note other, more ordinary options that we can use. One such nice option, possibly even the best one, are the back leather boots. However, we may also use Leonhardt's trousers as they also feature some distinctive boots. As for more options, I guess we may also note the Fallen Knight's trousers, mirror trousers, and possibly also the brand shoes. And to finish the discussion of armor elements for Gandalf's cosplay, let's note that Gandalf was actually entrusted with Narya, one of the three Elven Rings of Power that were free from Sauron's influence. And naturally our cosplay will be incomplete if we don't reflect this fact in our gear. So, basically, Narya is also known as the Red Ring or the Ring of Fire, and actually its very name is derived from Kenya word Narva meaning fiery red in this case, which in its turn is derived from word Nare or Narva fire, flame. And of course Nar is also related to Cinder and word Anor for sun which is so familiar to us. And it's no wonder that word for sun is related to word for fire, since elves had already had their languages and cultures way before the creation of the sun in their world. 
But, returning to the ring Naria and its association with fire, I guess that the first idea regarding it is that we may use something like flamestone blade ring or fire clutch ring to represent it. However, if we look a little deeper and recall that elven rings of power were made not as weapons of war or conquest, and those who created them desired not strength or domination, but understanding, making, healing and preserving things unstained. The fire clutch ring with its somewhat aggressive effects doesn't seem to be fit to represent Naria ring, and even the flamestone blade ring seems to be slightly less fitting, as Naria's power seems to be more complicated and related to fire less directly, somewhat not as literally. However, in Dark Souls 3 there actually is one ring with a red gemstone whose power may actually be somewhat reminiscent of Naria's purposes and whose appearance is close to Naria which is said to be adorned with a red gemstone, the life ring which features a small redue and increases our maximum HP. So I guess that the life ring and the flamestone blade ring are the best options to represent Naria in our cosplay. And that would finally be it regarding the armor options for Gandalf's cosplay. So let's now talk about the weapons that we may use for this cosplay. Basically, Gandalf was armed with his wizard staff, and since year 2941 of the Third Age also with an elven sword glamouring originating from the ancient hidden city of Gondolin. But let's begin with discussing the staff options first. Basically, Gandalf's staff was said to be rough cut and it apparently was long enough for Gandalf to lean on it. So I guess that using some longer staves would be fine for this cosplay. For example which tree branch? Especially fitting Gandalf the white cosplay. Heretic's Staff and possibly also Izalit's Staff. However, as on some depictions we may see Gandalf's Staff shown with some crystal inserted into its top, I guess that of course we may also use the Sage's Crystal Staff too. Regarding the other staves like Ordinary Sorcerer's Staff or Court Sorcerer's Staff, while their shape and appearance may actually be closer to some depictions of Gandalf's Staff, Unfortunately their size seems to be too small to be actually used to lean on them, which makes these options somewhat less fitting. However, I guess it's still not impossible to use them if you like to. And as for the sorceries that may be used, frankly speaking, as Gandalf was actually mostly restricted in use of his powers, unless facing an equally powerful enemy. I guess that's something like golden sorceries of Oalisile, for example casting light, repairing weapons, or deflecting magic with light would fit Gandalf's image the most. However, since the PvP may require something more aggressive, I guess that of course it's possible to use ordinary battle sorceries. Although their appearance may still somewhat differ from that of magic used by Gandalf, which is associated with white lights and flames. But, I guess that enchanting swords or casting shafts of light may actually be rather fitting. while other sorceries may appear a little similar to fireworks Gandalf was famous for. And since we've touched the topic of swords, let's discuss some options that we may use for glamdering. Actually, I guess there's quite a few of such options, as for example we may see quite a lot of various depictions of this sword on different artworks and in other media. Because not that many details are told regarding its precise appearance, basically it's only told that it had a beautiful scabbard, a decorated hilt, and had some runes inscribed into it. However, if we speculate a little recalling that original owner of this sword was Turgon the King of Gondolin, we may note that Turgon's sword, not directly called Glamdring though, so it's just a speculation, had white and gold in its appearance. Likely to fit the rest of attire of Turgon, who wore white clothes with a golden belt. But, anyway, I believe that this lack of precise detail actually leaves us a rather nice room for various options we may pick as our glamdering according to our liking. So, the first option I'd like to mention is the Lothric Knight Sword. Basically it's somewhat similar to some of the depictions of glamdering, and also has a guard decorated with apparently gold. And, as a somewhat similar option, I guess we may also use the Astora Straight Sword as it also has gold in its decorated design, while at the same time it also appears somewhat old, worn, ancient, which may actually be nice for representing Glamdring. However, I believe that we may also use some heavier options, for example, I guess the Great Sword of Judgment is a really nice option. It seems to be slightly similar to some depictions of Glamdring, which will possibly make our cosplay more recognizable. But the most peculiar about this great sword is its weapon art, that makes its blade glow. While Glamdring apparently used to glow in presence of orcs. And we may recall that Glamdring is also described glowing during Gandalf's fight against Balrog, though it's also possible that it was caused by Gandalf's power, rather than simply nature of the sword. 
But anyway, I guess that the Great Sword of Judgment is actually a very nice option for our cosplay and I personally use it the most. And, as for similar glowing options, I guess we may note another nice, although possibly slightly unusual choice. Lothric's Holy Sword. Despite its slightly unusual shape, I guess that its appearance with white and golden colors could actually fit Turgon's sword. And its blade also glows when using the weapon art. However, we may also recall that Glambring's name may be interpreted as Faux Hammer, basically Dring is a Sindarin word for hammer. And I guess that such hammer name somehow gives an impression of something heavy, which, I believe may allow us to consider some really heavy options as well. For example, the Astora Great Sword with its rather neat, in my opinion, design with some golden decoration may actually be a nice option. Or, the Lothric Knight Great Sword also appears rather interesting, and is even somewhat similar to some of the Glamdring's depictions. As for more unusual options, I guess we may also note the Twin Prince's Great Sword for its peculiar powers. Also maybe the Moonlight Great Sword could be a somewhat unorthodox option too, but personally I wouldn't use it. And I guess that the profaned Great Sword with its golden colors and magic powers may possibly be a nice option too. However, at the same time I guess the concept of the profane flame is something very, very different from Tolkien's secret fire and flame of Anor associated with Gandalf, so I guess it's not too fitting in this aspect, if it's important to anyone except of me, of course. Also, I guess that ordinary claymore may possibly be used too, though it would probably also give some associations of its own which possibly may make our cosplay less recognizable. And speaking of swords with inscribed runes, of course we may mention Executioner's Great Sword, but hardly such weapon would fit the sword of Noble High King of Noldor. But anyway, I guess that it would be pretty much it regarding the Gandalf's cosplay. I really hope that the things we discussed were interesting and possibly even useful to you. And now, let's finally proceed to the gear options for Othin modification of this cosplay. Hopefully it will take less time to discuss it, as Othin's cosplay is still pretty much based on the things we've already discussed. So, for example their headgear options stay pretty much the same as those we picked for Gandalf. However, since Othin's headgear doesn't have this requirement to have a pointed conical crown, I guess we may add some extra headgear options for Othin. Namely the black hand hat, which is rather wide brimmed and thus fitting. And also possibly the evangelist hat. However this hat also features a mask which may be a problem, of course. But we may also recall that one of the names used by Othin actually means masked one. So in the end, I guess that even such slightly weird option may be used too. And maybe we may also mention the cleric hat, but frankly speaking to me it doesn't appear too fitting. And as another possibly doubtful option, I'd like to note the ringed knighthood. Of course it's not even a hat, but still I guess that it would fit an image of enigmatic wanderer really nice. Though, let's now proceed to the chest armor options. Again, I guess that we may use some options that we mentioned earlier. The court sorcerer robe for example. Also, rather ironically, I guess that we may even use the somewhat feminine ordained dress. Because in Locus and Poem, Loki actually accuses Othin of living among the humans as a Volva, from Old Norse Vol for Staff, which is sort of a female shaman, a witch. So, quite peculiarly, some feminine things may possibly be used for Othin's cosplay too. However, since Othin's appearances as a wanderer often are associated with blue clothes, as we discussed it earlier in the video, I guess that the most fitting chest piece option for this cosplay is the cleric blue robe. Even though it has this shell on its back, I think that this robe still really gives our character the necessary appearance. Though I may be wrong and that shell may really be a serious problem, personally I still really enjoy playing this character using exactly this chest armor. But let's now talk about other parts of armor. As for the hand armor, I think that golden bracelets would fit this cosplay perfectly, providing this slight godlike impression about our character. As if a somewhat subtle hint about the true identity of this mysterious wanderer. Regarding the leg armor however, I'd use some really simple options like northern trousers. Or maybe the Millwood Knight leggings. And I guess that would be pretty much it for the attire options for this Othin modification of our cosplay. So, 
Let's finally proceed to the weapon options. And speaking of weapons associated with Othin, of course the thing that comes to mind is legendary Othin's spear Gungnir, the swaying one in Old Norse. Gungnir is actually a very peculiar spear that is said to be balanced so well, that it always hits its target. It's also somewhat interesting that it was created by the dwarves under the mastery of the blacksmith dwarf Dvalin, the one slumbering. Whose name, of course, was used by J.R.R. Tolkien along with some other edic names including Gandalf, though, I guess that in the end such name choice could possibly cause some problems, since the dwarvish language Kuzdul is actually based on Semitic languages and is rather similar to Hebrew, than Old Norse. However, as for the Gugnir spear, I guess that we may also mention that its story actually somewhat involves Goddess Sif, whose name, of course, reminds us of a certain great grey wolf, whom we discussed in one of the first Behind the Souls Names videos. But anyway, returning to our cosplay, I guess that, of course we should use some spear as a weapon. And I guess that actually there are some fitting options that we may use. For example we may particularly note the winged spear, which is in fact similar to some spears that were actually used by Vikings in their age. Though apparently such spears weren't exclusively Scandinavian in character. However, we may also recall that some stories mention Othin actually throwing his spear. So taking that into account, I guess that the best option would actually be the follower Javelin. However, as for more unusual options, among the spears used by Vikings we may actually find some whose shape is somewhat reminiscent of the Dragon Slayer Sword Spear. Well, of course they weren't as large, and apparently they weren't used in the manner the Dragon Slayer Sword Spear is, but I guess that it's also an interesting thing to mention. Though probably such option as Dragon Slayer Sword Spear wouldn't make our cosplay more recognizable, so I believe that the follower Javalin would actually be the most fitting option for our thin cosplay. And now I guess that it would finally be all for this cosplay. So, let's watch some demo scenes to see the cosplay in action. And now I guess that it would be pretty much it for this video, so, thanks for watching, as pretty much almost always, it ended up being way longer than I planned, but I hope that it wasn't too boring and maybe things we discussed today will be somehow useful to you. Frankly speaking, at first I thought that I will make just a really short video, but in the end it took a lot of more effort and I only hope that the video will be at least a tiny bit interesting and useful to you. So, thanks for watching once again, and also maybe you'd like to check out other lore, etymology or cosplay videos on my channel. Also, you can check out the video description for a link to the etymology videos table of contents. If you're interested in this topic, as it's meant to make it easy to find the discussion of the necessary names, 